Thank you, Dr. Nepal Kangadeji, for inviting us uh, for this uh, discussion held, at, uh, held by Dr. Shah Prasad Mukherjee's Research Foundation. I think there are lots of distinguished guests here. I think uh, all the speakers who spoke today gave very detailed insight and also I think uh, they made a lasting impression on the audience here today. Right? I would uh, wonder if I can uh, quickly recall some of the great remarks made by several people here. I think Dr. Arikshri Jaydev Ranadeji spoke on um, developments and uh, the leadership of China and uh, how the psychology of the leadership of the China is working on the leaders and also how other countries are dealing with uh, China today. And there are several things, I think, um, I, I don't think I can even uh, conclude or even summarize uh, these amazing facts and insight, I think, that leaders uh, thrown uh, uh, to the table today. And uh, she, Claudia Arby, Arby, also spoke very well with a lot of details. And uh, she, Vijay Kanti, also mentioned uh, very details, and especially after uh, seeing this, uh, Presentation, I think it was, um, in, in my view, it was like almost like a shocking. And, uh, and um, how aspiring China is, and uh, how the strategic uh, movements are happening and they're taking place, and uh, why the India uh, uh, should uh, take adequate measures, uh, not necessarily for the combat purpose, at least to in, in defense. I would uh, think uh, there are a lot of things needs to be done from uh, India side. One, uh, I, I, actually, when I was in the United States, I think several people worked under me and with me and above me uh, from China, India, and uh, United States, of course. Uh, what I noticed uh, is. Uh, the cultural and emotional uh, differences between uh, uh, us and also some similarities, of course. Uh, we should uh, take the things on both military and also on diplomacy. And uh, I think uh, we are uh, not doing much in uh, both of them. Today and uh, the I think here yeah, today I think we the mankind has developed and uh, we should uh, figure out how do you work together and survive and cooperate and uh, develop uh, in a much better way than uh, from the Stone Age. I think. Uh, Arm threats should be the last option for any country because it consumes resources, it takes away uh, uh, your uh, ability to do other works, and it's costly. I uh, uh, think we should also engage with China on uh, not only the like, uh, answer to the military, of course, we need to do, but we should also focus on diplomacy, compassion, cooperation, and discussion, negotiation, and exchange programs. Uh, we are doing it today, but it is a, at a surface level. It is not uh, truly in a deeper sense. And most of the time, all these conflicts are simply lack of intelligence and, and wisdom. Uh, we should also work on these things more seriously. It may be look like it may look like a, uh, oh, we are not uh, focusing more on military side, but uh, we should not. Uh, 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 look at the conflict is the only answer for all the problems. Of course, there are always going to be threats, always going to be uh, aspirations from other countries, but we should uh, try to explore all avenues to nullify or uh, eliminate such uh, threats more intelligently. I think, uh, as uh, Arthur C. Clarke once said, I think uh, intelligence yet to prove its uh, 
significance in the mankind survival. So we are, we are not sure that intelligence is the only way to survive. Who knows? That may be the only way to extinguish the mankind. Well, having said that, once upon a time uh, in India and the Indian region was uh, very strong and it made a significant contribution to the mankind and um, several things came from that region and that era. Uh, for example, uh, in India was an inventor of several things. For example, it could be a button or it could be mathematical uh, uh, contributions such as zero and hospitals, surgery, chess, plastic surgery, sharp words, several things that actually originated from India and of course the, the, so some more items. But uh, what I noticed is uh, many of these things happened probably thousands of years back. But what happened after that? Where did you lose that game? How, how did uh, the 120 crores of people uh, now ended up uh, in such a helpless situation? Is it not something I think the uh, parliament should take seriously? Is it not something the media should take seriously? Is it not something the learned class should take seriously? I think uh, so far our success has been uh, analyzing the problem or uh, outlining what is wrong and where we are wrong not necessarily taking the corrective measures to uh, improve on the situation. Um, I think uh, the policies and politics must change in this country. Uh, today, uh, uh, in an average, uh, uh, in, a, in, in the population, average person is completely dissatisfied uh, with the politics and the politicians and the overall governance, administration. Uh, these things, I think, uh, should be taken very seriously. Um, I think uh, everybody is a partner in this. Not only the politicians, administration is a partner for this failure, and administration and the media is also a partner for this failure, and also the general public. Um, we, we, we don't see the bigger picture. We, we're not coming together in the bigger picture. Um, uh, we, we think we are, uh, we, we'll just get away by focusing on the upcoming election. Uh, I think that that's going to cost us uh, big in the coming future, including uh, for example, I visited GTRE some time back. I asked them what are they doing. They are trying to develop an aircraft engine almost for 30 years. And with several thousands of crores already have been spent on that. And uh, I asked them, what is the challenge? They, in a simple words, they said, they don't know the material that is being used to make the aircraft uh, engines blade from 30 years. Why, why are we failing like this collectively? What, what are the institutions doing? Are we, is he, uh, are we funding them adequately? Are we enabling them to produce world-class results? Where is the innovation in this country? Why are we like this? I'm sorry? And uh, even in, uh, if you look at the agriculture, we are nearly 140 years behind the, uh, uh, behind the other, say, other countries. I can show you that. There are uh, times when the people harvested cotton by means of automatic uh, cotton harvesting machines, they lived 130, 140 years back in other countries. We still have to do that. There are many people even stopped cultivating cotton because we are not even getting labor today. And, uh, and the energy dependence, I think this is shocking. And we are an equatorial line. We get abundant sunlight um, compared to many other countries, uh, including China, Canada, Russia, the United Kingdom, you know, European countries, uh, and many of them are not in the equatorial line. They don't get uh, enough radiation like us. But today, we are not even bothered to exploit such opportunities. We are still uh, heavily building on uh, uranium options and are trying to still stick on to the uh, coal-based solutions. Uh, you, uh, what, what is your energy uh, solution for another 30 years or 50 years? Nobody has an answer. And uh, the only option is now going for nuclear, for which you know, we have just less than 1% of the uh, uh, fuel uh, in this country. Uh, so we are basically essentially letting somebody else to take over our energy future. I think this country should take these things very seriously. I really spoke on this in the parliament. I'm not sure how much media noticed, I'm not, I'm not sure how much even parliament has noticed. They thought it's a Greek and Latin and uh, there's a next question. And on uh, the education side, if you look at seriously, why any of these inventions in this room? If you look at them, any of them, including his microphone, laptop, 
and the keyboard and the processor inside that, including the camera and the amplifier and the speaker and the projector uh, and your cell phone, your car, bike, space shuttle, uh, anything you imagine, uh, it came from someone who is not Indian. Uh, how, how come many of our Indian IITs, uh, Indian of Science, and elite engineering colleges, and thousands of engineers, maybe lakhs of engineers, maybe crores of engineers, and uh, uh, doctors, and scientists, we collectively fail. And how many Nobel Prize winners are here in this country today? It's a single digit. I can, we, we, we are all able to see there are at least a dozen or two dozen teaching in the, many of the institutions in the uh, United States. Maybe there are more than 400 Nobel Prize winners in the California. So these things must be taken very seriously if we really, really mean to address the issues we are highlighting here. Or else it's going to be a very pathetic situation. We need to be aggressive, we need to focus on the education, we need to focus on the innovation, we need to do less politics and we should get on to the job and uh, at least th we should look at this as an opportunity to wake up. I think, uh, as our friend said, you know, uh, sorry for waking up, but uh, he, he, I think uh, he, he explicitly mentioned it very clearly. Uh, it is a message to uh, the country. Uh, we should use this as an opportunity. Many of the Great innovation happened during war time, but it doesn't mean that the war should be the only way to uh, uh, advance the mankind, including computing and the network, and many of things happened in the, as a military exercise. Um, today, our education plays a very, very important role for innovation. Innovation plays a very important role for economy. Economy plays an important role for defense and military. So if you, don't, if you want to have a strong military, strong defense, and a strong country, we have to have a good economy. If you really want to have a good economy, you have to make sure you innovate. And if you really want to innovate, <coughs> you've got to have good education. And if you don't focus on the education, where is the economy? Where is the military? That's the result. We are trying to figure out how to make an aircraft engine from 30 years. This is a very shocking thing. Um, our entire education now depends on like a three things. Like just read, remember, reproduce. Oh, why? And if you ask any engineer how much you understand, I go around and ask the engineers, and uh, I myself being an engineer, I ask them, okay, out of 100 you scored 70, 80, 90, but tell me how much you understood. The more you let the student think, he will come back uh, with a smaller and smaller number. It's going to be 3%, 2%, 1%. So that means if he understood less than 5% or 10%, it only means he did not understand the 90% remaining. So what can we expect from an engineer or a doctor or a lab? or any, anyone in the profession uh, to that field or to advance that field if he has a gap of nearly about 90 percent. So this thing, these things must be you know, addressed very seriously if you really want to have a stronger country. Um, today I think I focus more on uh, uh, what needs to be done and uh, I should uh, thank from bottom of my heart for uh, throwing much, uh, much better light into the reality and the situation and all the other speakers did an excellent job. Uh, I think it was worth uh, for me to come down here and uh, I think all of you uh, have something to take away. And But uh, we should also come together again to see how to uh, come uh, converse towards a solution. Because we discuss, we leave, uh, we will leave at that point. Uh, what is the conclusion? Where do we go from here? Who should be held responsible? How, how do we make them responsible? How do we deliver? Uh, and also people of this country uh, need to do a much better job in the uh, polls. Uh, most of the time, it doesn't matter uh, what is your credibility, what you can really do. It all depends on who, you, whom you are born, whom you know, and how much money you can spend. I don't think we can build a stronger country with that. And let's use this as an opportunity to change some of these uh, age-old mechanism of ruling, and let's come up with a better solutions. I must thank the, all the organizers, and especially Dr. Anil Balji, for giving me an opportunity to share a couple words with you. Uh, I would do my best uh, in my limited capacity to bring it up in the parliament. Uh, I also, I was also like a dissatisfied with the way uh, politicians were looked at. And uh, even today when I go, with, go to the parliament, along with many senior MPs, and there is one uh, gate uh, for MPs and there is a side gate for PAs. So when I go with them, many of them interpret me as a PA. And they tell me, hey PAs, please come down other road, other door, right? So this is a tradition. So traditionally, we all thought politicians should be like this. I think we should look at some of the examples they showed today in the presentation. 
and also look at the uh, developments that are taking place in the United States and Singapore and many other countries through, from whom we can learn a lot, not all of them, but at least there are uh, good uh, points to pick up and uh, take it from here. Thank you so much and have a great night, sir. Thank you, Mr. Swami, for uh, down to earth observations. Uh, you have <coughs> outlined the, uh, the practical issues involved in uh, the developmental aspects. And, uh, you have also mentioned about the political pulse of the country and what needs to be done. Uh, some sober thoughts there. So thank you. Uh, we now have uh, discussion, intervention. Uh, first, let's go with the uh, former member of parliament, Honorable. Uh, it's uh, very comfortable when the listeners are less.